Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Clee the Visionary, and this is the Build Your Vision Show, the number one show in the world for young adults who are serious about building a life they are proud of. And you're here because you want to be more than a dreamer. You want to be a world changer. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you four ways that you can thrive while in the trenches, when it feels like you've hit rock bottom. If you do these four things, you will make it through and you won't be there for long. If you feel like you've just been going through it, remember, it's just a season and these four tips will help you climb out. Now, this is a slightly different format that you'll be hearing. This is a live stream that I did on YouTube and TikTok. Uh, So it's a little different. I'm playing with some methods because I'm really starting to try to incorporate video into the show and and make a dent in online video. So bear with me as I test out these different things. Give me some feedback um, as well. If if you like it, don't like it. Um, I'm going to be making it better as time goes on. But this is why the format is set up like this in this episode. Let's go. You're listening to the Build Your Vision podcast. A podcast series about maneuvering the ups and downs of building a life that you're proud of, captured in real time. A community where dreamers become doers, and doers become world changers. Let's go. I am so excited because uh, it's one thing to read the Bible. It's another thing to uh, to study the Bible. And it's another thing to study the Bible with intention and, you know, visionaries people that have been a part of my tribe for a while know that uh people that listen to the podcast and watch my content know that especially on linkedin know that um hey look vision is everything for us vision is everything for us so we're going to be looking at scripture through that visionary lens and um you know the thing that we teach here is that our success our influence our our impact is all wrapped up in how well we see right you can't be a visionary if you can't see that's like literally the opposite of vision that's that's blindness um <laughs> so 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 we want to be able to see god clearer we want to be able to see ourselves better we want to be able to see others in the world around us better uh so that's the way we're going to be approaching scriptures i'm super excited we're going to be getting into the book of jeremiah tonight if you're watching on tiktok um if you want to see my screen with the scriptures up on there uh, head on over to my YouTube channel and uh, it's going to be in my bio. You could just click on my YouTube channel for my bio um, on my profile. I'm going to be diving into the book of Jeremiah. Hey, what's up, Tom? OK, you guys can hear me. Good. Now I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to practice being able to look, look at this screen while looking at this camera while looking at my monitor. There's a lot going on here. Uh, glad you can hear me, Tom. Glad you're here, buddy. Um, we're going to be diving into the book of Jeremiah today. And um, this this is an interesting one. We're going to be in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. And some of you Bible thumpers might be familiar uh, with where I'm going with this text already, because you you have a verse that you like from Jeremiah 29 already. It's a popular verse in Christendom. You get you hear it a lot. It's Jeremiah 29, 11, to be specific. We're not going to get there yet. We're, we're getting there. We're getting we're going to get there, but we're, we're not going to start there. Um, I just want to, first of all, look, if you're watching, whether you're on TikTok, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Facebook, if you have been in the trenches before, just put me in the chat. Just put me in the chat. That can mean whatever it means to you. That's what we're going to be talking about, how to thrive in the trenches tonight. Um, hey, look, if you, that, that could be, hey, you, you're at a, at a job that you just can't stand. You in the trenches, uh, you that can mean that that your relationships right now are just in shambles. You're in the trenches. That can mean that you feel like a failure because uh, you're not where you want to be career wise or professionally yet uh, or in life yet. And you feel like all that money that you spent on school went to a waste. You're in the trenches uh, that could be emotionally in the trenches, uh, dealing with anxiety, dealing with depression, dealing with other mental health concerns you are like emotionally in the trenches you could be financially lord (laughs) you could be financially in the trenches when you when you pull up to taco bell and you get nervous you really in the trenches um you know i've been there uh it's it's tough it's tough you could be financially in trenches there's a whole bunch of things that could be in the trenches we're going to be talking about the israelites today who are familiar 
with the trenches. They were there a lot. They had their high moments, but they also had a lot of trenches moments. Uh, to give you some context, we're going to be jumping in from uh, chapter 29, but I want to back up to chapter 28 first and give you guys some context of where we are in the biblical narrative right now. So, you know, the Israelites, God's chosen people, um, he He set them apart to be to be his his chosen nation, to be example to all other nations. And he took them from Egypt. He led them through the wilderness to the promised land. Now, we've gone through all that. Moses has died. Joshua has died. They are in the promised land now and they act in the fool. Now, they've been acting the fool, you know, pretty much the <laughs> most of the time. But um, they're really acting crazy. They're they're doing literally the opposite of what they were there to do. Uh, God put them there. They're in the land of Canaan. So that means they're not the only ones there. Of course, you have the Canaanites that live there. You got the Hivites, the Jebusites, all the other ites, Staglamites, Staglatites, <laughs> whatever other ites are there. Um, and instead of them get setting the example and having those other cultures conform to them, Sterling, what's up, my guy? What's up, bro? Um, glad you could join. Instead of them having other people conform to them, they conform to all the other nations. So they start doing what they're doing. They start partying how they party and they start worshiping idols, how they worship idols instead of their God, or really even more trifling in addition to their God. So they would literally make sacrifices at the temple on the Sabbath or whatever, whatever it was. And then afterward, go worship another idol. Now that's, that's that's a whole nother like just dismiss God completely. Don't 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 do both. That that's that wishy washy stuff. That's we don't like that. <laughs> we don't like that. So this is where the Israelites are right now, and basically God's like, yo, I've had enough. Um, they they need to learn a lesson. I'm going to send them into exile, and this is where the Babylonian Empire, which we hear a lot about today, even in the secular world, we hear about the Babylonian Empire uh, quite often who was just a very, very, very strong empire, along with the Greek and Roman Empire, things like that, uh, that, that, that made their mark on history. They, they captured the Israelites. They captured the Israelites. And I'm going somewhere with this. Stick with me. Stick with me, y'all. This, this context is important for how we're going to address this scripture. They get taken into, into captivity. And um, there is a guy that Jeremiah talks to in chapter 28. His name is Hananiah. Hananiah is is a prophet. So is Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a prophet too. There, but there's a distinct difference between uh, Jeremiah and Hananiah. And that difference is Hananiah is a false prophet. And basically what Hananiah is saying is essentially Hananiah was the modern day prosperity gospel preacher. He was saying, hey, look, y'all, I know things are looking bad right now, but your time is coming. Uh, this is only going to happen for two years. Two years, we're going to be back in, in the promised land. The, your, your, your day is coming. We're going to be delivered. Just, just keep living on the promises of God. He told me that we are going to get out of here in two years max. And my headphones. Two years max. Jeremiah pulls up and is like, bro, what God you talking to? Because that's not what God really just said. I don't know what you're talking about. So basically, um, I'll pull it up on the screen right here. Um, in chapter 28, Jeremiah is basically like, um, yeah, that that spoke that word is nice. Um, you saying that we're gonna be back in the promised land in no time, but I hope everything that you're saying is true. He says in starting verse six. Amen. May your prophecies come true. I hope the Lord does everything you say. This sounds kind of sarcastic. I hope he does uh, bring back from Babylon the treasures of this temple and all the captives. But listen now to the solemn words. I speak to you in the presence of all these people. The ancient prophets who preceded you and me spoke against many nations, always warning war, disasters, and disease. So a prophet who predicts peace must show. He is right. Only when his predictions come true can we know that he is really from the Lord. All right. So we got some context of what's happening. We're going to hop on over to chapter 29, right? 
And we're going to start with verse chapter four, because we just heard what the false prophecy was. Now we're about to hear what the true prophecy was from Jeremiah. This is what it says. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes and plan to stay. Plan, you know what? Hold on. <laughs> build homes and plan to stay. So that if you build in a house, I don't think, I mean, maybe you put in the chat if if you if you do buy a home for short term purposes. But if I know I'm going to stay somewhere for only two years, I am not building anything. I am renting whatever it is because I know I'm about to be out of there. So clearly God is saying, um, yeah, this is not about to be quick. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. So you plant gardens, you plant gardens too. So that means you uh you you gotta have food, you're gonna have sustenance, you gotta provide for yourself, marry and have children, then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Okay, Lord. So this means um that you're going into multiple generations now. This is what I'm hearing. Um, so that we know this ain't gonna be no two years. Multiply, do not dwindle away. And work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray to ooh, pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to put too much dip on your chip when we as we are uh, getting started. Where's my mouse? Where my mouse at, y'all? I want to put too much dip on your chip as we get started. Um. This is what the Lord of Heaven's Army says. So build your homes. Now, I want to talk about being in the trenches. Um, and I want to go through five specific things that every person needs to do while you're in the trenches. Now, we already went through what those trenches might be. It might be financial trenches. It might be relational trenches. It might be marital trenches. It might be uh, professional trenches. Whatever your trenches are, and you feel like you've hit rock bottom. This is five things from this passage that you can do in order to thrive even in the trenches. So the first thing, right? It says, <laughs> build homes and plan to stay. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. So this means that you are being fruitful where you are. You are planting down and planting gardens so that you could be fruitful, so you could be productive, so that you could be self-sustaining right where you are. So the first thing, and it's going to be five Ps, the first thing is plan to prosper while you're in the trenches. I'm going to just let that. Plan to prosper while you're in the trenches. I think the biggest thing that visionaries struggle with, because we're so far ahead and where like where we know we want to be, where like our ideas and stuff. The biggest thing that we struggle with as visionaries, what well, the biggest mistake is, especially as young visionaries, is uh, waiting for our turn instead of taking advantage of the opportunity that's actually in front of us. You're saying, ah, you know, I don't have the authority right now. I'm not in charge right now. I'm going to wait till it's my time. And everybody's going to see that I was really the guy all along. I'm going to wait until it's my turn to show up and show up big. When really, you need to be playing the garden. You need to be, you need to be building a house <laughs> while you're in the trenches because you won't be able to do what God has called you to do until you do that thing. Um, I mean, like, get control of your finances while you're broke because you won't know what to do with the money when you have it because you never figured out how to deal with it when you were in the trenches, right? Start that LLC while you are minimum wage, entry-level employee. I mean, I'm serious. I, I, I've been through this myself. Like, find your purpose 
while you're single. Don't wait till all that other stuff gets complicated to figure out what you're trying to do with your life. Build your home, plant your gardens while in the trenches, plan to prosper. And the thing is, and this, this is the thing about like prosperity messages, right? Prosperity messages are inherently wrong, right? It's, it's, it's not always heresy that you're hearing when you hear a prosperity gospel. The thing, the, the, the part that usually gets misconstrued is God's intent and God's timing. So it's not name it and claim it, blab it and grab it, turn around five times, slap your neighbor on the face and, and boom, it's yours. It takes time. But you know from Romans 8.28 uh, that whatever you do, is going to prosper if you know you're doing what God's purpose is for you. All things work together for the good of those that uh, work according to His purpose in their lives, right? So we know we're going to prosper. We, we're going to plan to prosper, but right now we're just not where we want to be. So the first thing, plan to prosper. You know it's coming. Plan for it now. All right. So uh, verse six, right? <laughs> Mary have children. Find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply. That's more fruitfulness. That's more productivity. That is more of us uh, uh, increasing our wealth, even though we're not where we want to be yet. Do not dwindle away. Work for the peace and prosperity. I'm on verse 7. Work for the peace, and I'll add it back to the screen. Work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Now, this I, this is when I was reading this. This is where I really was like, mm, God. God. And I remember a specific time in my life when I was like, ooh. But if I help them win, I'm going to be here longer in the same situation, God. Why would you have me work? Like, let me just, let me just wait it out. I know I'm not going to be here forever. Let me just lay low, do my little thing and get up on out of here. No, that's not what God is teaching us. That's not how you thrive in the trenches. Or that's not even how you get out the trenches. You'll be there for a long time. If you just wait, if you just wait for your moment, your turn, if you just complain and criticize. And this 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 was hard. This was hard for me to to come to grips with because it takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice of your energy, of your energy, it takes sacrifice of your ego. My that's one I struggle with a lot. Sacrifice of your ego. But it says, work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. So wherever you're at, make sure they win. Because when they win, you ultimately win too. Even though it might not feel like it right now, you win too. That's why it says, pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. God could have left that out of the prophecy if it wasn't important. But obviously it was. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously it was. For its welfare will determine your welfare. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, but by me continually striving to give my best in a place when I was in the trenches, it ultimately worked out for my welfare in the end. And I know that can happen for so many people that are watching this right now live or on rebroadcast. By you making sure the people around you, even though you are just, this is, this is not it. This is not it for you. You feel like you're in exile right now. Why, God, why do you have me here? This is not the vision. This is not the game plan, God. Like, remember what we talked about? Work for the welfare where you're at right now because it will determine your welfare. God sees the long game. It's, 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 it's so crucial. So the second P that we're going to address Pray for your oppression. For the success of your oppression will, de will determine the success of your progression. 
You can't get to where God wants you to go until you help the people around you or the place that you're in get where it needs to be. That's it. And that's hard. It's hard to pray for the people that are holding you back. For the people that are manipulating, like people that are are, are trying to get underneath your skin, people or places that literally just drive you nuts. That is hard to pray for them. But if we are really trying to be like Christ, that's literally exactly what Jesus did. He said, Lord, don't hold it against them, for they know not what they do. He was praying for those that were persecuting him. And that's another verse in the Bible as well. So it takes a lot of humility. I mean, through through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to do this. But pray. Pray for those oppressing you. Pray for, pray for this country. I mean, this country oppresses a lot of people. It's not perfect. We got to pray for our leaders. We got to pray for our country because its welfare will determine your welfare. I don't know why we over here acting like we want to burn the place that we live down. You live here. That's going to affect you. <laughs> like I, I that never that never made sense to me like I, I don't understand that even though we serve a god who is not limited by reality that doesn't mean that we don't live in reality all right let me get off my soapbox so uh we got the first two p's we have plan to prosper while you're in the trenches in order to thrive plan to prosper plant your houses plant your gardens Eat the food, marry, have children, find spouses, have grandchildren, multiply, be fruitful. Second one, pray for your oppression. For the success of your oppression will determine the success of your progression. Are we going to go down to verse 8 of Jeremiah chapter 29? And it says, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel says, do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. Trifling. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For you will be in Babylon for 70 years, not two years. But then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. I will bring you home again. So. Hey, Doc Keisha. How you doing? I'm glad you could hop on. Thanks for sending the love. Um, the third P, how to thrive in the trenches. Protect your gates. The gate of your ears, the gate of your eyes, the gate of your heart, your soul. Protect your gates. God is saying here, look, don't let these fools who are saying things that that are supposed to be in my name, that aren't in my name, affect how you uh, go about this whole thing. You have to know the truth. Do not be deceived. And there are a lot of people, I'm not going to say they're, gonna, they're saying that they're a prophet. They might. They definitely, I, I, I see it all the time on YouTube, say they're a prophet. Or this could be people who are just in your ear telling you stuff that's just not true <laughs> it legit is just not true but if you listen to it long enough you might be hey, you know what you know you might have a point you might have no they don't they do not have a point actually they the point is that it's false you have to protect your case this doesn't just mean people real people this means the media too what are you watching who are you? Who are you filling your mind space with? Who Who are you listening to on TikTok? Who are you watching on Instagram, on YouTube? What are you watching on Netflix? That is feeding your heart, your mind, your soul, your emotions, your ambitions. Because some people will literally feed you information that will make you dig your trench even deeper. It's 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 messed up. 
But but the thing usually about it is it sounds so good. <laughs> Your deliverance is on the way sounds so good. You know, the, the, the check is going to be on your mailbox through by faith by the end of the week. Sounds so good. It's encouraging. But even though we send a, a serve a God that does encourage us, he's also a God, uh, a perfect timing. And perfect timing usually isn't our timing because we are just naturally impatient. Our, our, our understanding of time is so finite toward the, broad, the grand scheme of, of eternity and omniscience that we want things really fast. We want them really soon. Me t- I, and I'm talking to myself. You got to protect your gates because psh, you will get led astray. And that's exactly what happened to a lot of these Israelites in chapter 29, uh, verse 8 and 9 specifically. God is saying, do not listen to them. They will trick you. It literally says they will trick you. Do not listen to their dreams. They are saying lies in my name. God told me to tell you. No, did he? Did he? Did he really? <laughs> so you might be asking, though, because this is what I thought when I was doing this study myself. How do you know what to listen to? That can be really hard. That can be really, really hard. How do you know who to listen to? Because this is stuff that's gray. Lots of times it's not black or white. It's not like, hey, you know what you should do? You should murder that guy. That's easy. It's like, oh, no, that's that's bad. No, 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 no. I don't need to do that. But it's that gray. It's the gray stuff when, when, when it's, it's, it may be good, but it's not the best for you. It might feel right, but it's not the right thing. So how do you know who to listen to? How do you know what to listen to? Uh, I think the first thing we could go back actually to chapter 28. And it tells us, actually, it really, it tells us pretty clearly. It says in chapter six, listen uh, to the solemn words. I speak to you in the presence of all these people, the ancient prophets who preceded you and spoke and me spoke against many nations, always warning of war, disaster, and disease. So a prophet who precedes peace, who predicts peace, must show he is right. Only when his predictions come true can we know that he is really from the Lord. The first way we can know whether it is who to listen to is what's their history? What are the receipts? Has what they said come true before i i have a couple people in my head who are good people but i know once they give me advice i should probably do the opposite of what they say because their advice has never worked out it's never been right it's never been true it's never gotten me peace ever so i i don't like i don't even need to to fill my my burn my brain calories with i wonder if i should listen to no have they ever been right before it literally says it right there, chapter 28. Only when his predictions come true can we know that he is really from the Lord. Pull up the receipts. Have they been right? Do they have a track record of truthfulness from the Lord? All right, second way to know who to listen to. Uh, what does God say? What does God say about the situation that you are in. Now, God might not say everything explicitly about your specific situation, but he will say a principle that applies to your situation. What are the principles that you have discovered or can seek in scripture that apply to your situation? What does God say about it? I want to get breeze through this because this is a side tangent, but I know this question might have popped up for some people. Um, second thing, pray for discernment. Third thing, pray for discernment. This is actually really huge. Um, A lot of my biggest decisions have come from me saying, hey, God, I need the Holy Spirit to help me in making this decision. decision. Give me a spirit of discernment so I could I could cipher. I could have the intuition to know to 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 separate the truth from the false. In this situation. 
Um, and and it happens. It always happens. And it doesn't. It's not. It's not like the Holy Spirit is like, this is what you need to do. Like that's that's not <laughs> that's not what happens. Um, it's usually my gut. And woo, when your spirit is not right, and you feel you feel it, <laughs> you feel that thing. That's the Holy Spirit, especially when you prayed for it. It gets strong. Um, and the last thing, another, another uh, it kind of goes, it kind of goes with the praying for discernment. Ask God. I, I've seen so. I, I mean, I've done this so much myself. I'm like, man, I don't know what to do about this decision. I don't know who I should believe. Blah blah blah. And then someone asked me. And this leads into our last point. Someone asked me, uh, well, what did God say about it? Like, did you ask him? I'm like, oh, man. No, I ain't, I ain't even asked him about it yet. Ask him. <laughs> Pray to God and ask him. Is this what I, should I believe this person? Should I go this route? Is this prophecy true? Like, literally, ask him. All right. And this actually goes hand in hand with uh, something that is in chapter 29 as well, uh, in verse 13, where it says, seek me wholeheartedly. Seek me wholeheartedly and you will find me. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, seek me wholeheartedly and you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. So it, it literally says, hey, if you seek me, I'm going to be there. You got to just ask. And we often just don't, we don't ask. Last thing is seek godly counsel. Like I told that friend that say, hey, well, uh, what did God say? Did you ask him? I was like, oh, no, I didn't. I didn't ask him. That is someone who was a godly counsel for me. Now, this could be difficult, especially if you're new to the faith. Um, I always advise, and this is why I'll be starting my online community very shortly. Uh, because you have to have God-fearing people around you. I mean, it is so, community is so, so, so crucial. I mean, like, oh, it helps so much. The way you're able to bounce things off of people and, and you can trust their judgment. That's the thing. When you know someone is is in their word, is led by the Holy Ghost, who who has an actual relationship with God, not just goes to church. In your corner, it's huge. See godly counsel. So, how do you know? So, uh, this all goes into protect your gates. How do you protect your gates? Well, you have to know who and who not to listen to. How do you know who and not who not to listen to? Look at the receipts. How do they have a history of saying what's false, or do they have a history of saying what's true? What does God say? What does God say in his word, in his scripture? What has he said in his word or his scripture that applies to your situation? It might not be specific, but the principle is applicable. Pray for discernment. Pray for the Holy Spirit to help you make decision, better decisions. The Lord, uh, the, the, it says in James, if you ask for wisdom, God will not turn it away from you. He'll give it to you happily, generously. Ask God. Ask God for discernment. He'll give it to you. Then just ask God. <laughs> Literally, ask God for the answer. It says in Jeremiah 29, seek me wholeheartedly and you shall find me. And then lastly, seek godly counsel. Surround yourself with God-fearing people who can speak truth into your life. All right, guys, I've been rambling on. I want to wrap this up. The fourth P, how to thrive in the trenches Proclaim God's promises. Now we're going to get to the very, very popular verse in Jeremiah chapter 29, where it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. Some versions say plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. We like to just say this verse, and it's a good one. It makes us feel great inside oh man god has plans to prosper me not to harm me future and the hope thank you god but now we understand a context that's excuse me that's surrounding this scripture it's because of all the stuff that led up before it you got a plan to prosper you got to pray for your oppressors you have to protect your gates then you could claim the promises of god 
and 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 we know this. this is why we have hope as followers of christ because we know that all things work together for those who are called according to his purpose if you are seeking to fulfill god's purpose for your life you are going to prosper bottom line like 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 it's easy to worry but you really don't have to if you are obeying god if you are following his will for your life if you are fulfilling the purpose he has called you for, to fulfill on this earth, you are going to prosper. Point blank, period. When? How? Variables apply. <laughs> but you don't have to fret about whether you're going to or not. Because it's in his word. You have to claim those promises. Um. They that weigh on the Lord shall renew that he shall renew their strength. It shall rise up like on the wings of eagles. You got to wait on him. But the promise is there. And as you wait, if you do all the other things that lead up to this verse, because we love this verse, chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, but we got to make sure that we plan to prosper. Got to got to do the work while you're in the trenches. Got to pray for your oppressors. You got to uh, 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 protect your gates. Who are you listening to? What are you listening to? Who are you letting guide your life? God proclaim the promises. Last one, we're about to wrap up. And this is the toughest one out of all of them. I promise you, bro. This is the toughest one. Patience. The fifth P is patience. God said, you are going to be here in captivity by the Babylonians for 70 years. Can you imagine being 50 years old and God says you're going to be someplace for 70 years? You're like, well, well, that's it for me. <laughs> I'm finna die, right? <laughs> so he was like, yeah, yeah, plant your gardens, plant your homes because it's going to be a little while. Patience. This is so hard, especially when you're young. Because your concept of time is so much shorter. I remember one time I was at church, and you know, you hear adults say this kind of stuff all the time. Oh, you know, that was about that was about 30 years ago, you know, and they tell the story like it was yesterday. I'm like, 30 years ago, I'm not even 30 years old. How you I oh yeah, I should retire in about, you know, I'll be there I'll, about 15 more years. 15 years? That's a long time. To me, that's a long time. So you think 70 years in captivity, but to God, what is that? What is that to God? So patience, you know, you have a plan. You have a vision. You're like, God, I know you have placed this on my heart. When is it going to happen? <laughs> uh, you have to wait on the Lord. But you got you to gotta plant that house. You better plant that garden while you're there. You better pray for the prosperity of where you at because it determines your welfare because you're not even going to get to where he has you to go if you don't do what you got to do while you're there. It's hard, though. You got to pray. Pray for, for God to give you the, the humility. Pray for God to give you the, the, the wherewithal to know that you're going to prosper. You're going to claim the promises, but it's in his timing. That's hard. It's hard. But we see in this story in Jeremiah chapter 29 um, that it all works out in the end. Y'all, I am trying to get my mouse together and, and it is just beating me up. Tara, thank you so much for coming in. How are you? Oh, man, I need to hit you up. I'm going to hit you up after this. I'm gonna hit you up after this, guys. I hope this was good. Hey, if this was if this was good, throw some fire in the chat, uh, like my mentor, Doctor Darius Daniel says. Throw some fire, <laughs> put some fire in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this up right now, uh, but patience. And I love this. I love this. Patience requires faith. I forgot to mention that. Patience requires faith. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. Faith is like. Faith is acting, sorry, and that's key word, acting, not believing, not knowing, not acknowledging. Faith is acting. That means you're, you're, you're doing some works 
like God is telling the truth. That's where real patience comes into play. All right, so I'm, I'm going to go back over these. How do you thrive in the trenches when you feel like you've hit rock bottom? You got a plan to prosper. Pray for your oppression. Protect your gates. Proclaim God's promises. And have patience. I hope this was good. I probably was all over the place. Um, this is my first live. Uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed that episode. Slightly different format and structure, but I think it had a lot of value to add anyway. All right, I'll talk to you guys next week. Until then, keep building your vision every single day. Peace. Executive production by Cleavon Davis. Music production by Cleavon Davis and Christian Hernandez. Build Your Vision Podcast is a product of Build Your Vision, LLC.